Welcome back everyone to Data Science for Everyone. Today we're going to be looking at random force classifiers with PySpark. Let's get started. So the basic structure of our uh, linear regression classifier is going to follow sim suit to similarly what we've done in the past. Um, so we're going to do this basic walkthrough using the documentation data um, as we've done in the past. Uh, so let's get started with this. So from PySpark dot ML import and I'm going to go through and start grabbing things the way that you would in a normal project uh, starting today forward and so we would normally grab the pipeline we're not going to be using pipeline today uh, but we will be using it in the future and then from pyspark.ml uh, dot classification we're going to import a random uh, forest classifier and then from pyspark.ml.evaluation, we're going to import the multi-class uh, classification evaluator. Now, and it's notice there's two here. There's uh, the label and the uh, class. We want the class. And then we also, oops, I should have also gone. I'll put that up here too. Uh, from pyspark.sql, uh, import our Spark session. And so let's uh, instantiate our Spark session. Our spark session here and we want our builder we want the format here uh, or well actually let's do app name app name and here I'm just going to call it uh, random forest and then get or create again all of this should be um, whoops mm -mm -mm -mm. all right so my Java build failed hold on let me let me go and fix that really quickly Okay, so that problem's uh, fixed. So now let's go on and grab um, our data. So spark.read.format here, and this is going to be the lib svm. And we are going to load, and it's a sample lib svm data.txt. And then I'll double check the what it looks like here in a second, df.show once that runs. All right, and so we should see here, again, we have our labels and our features. Again, reason we're in this way is because we are doing the uh, random forest classifier. Um, we're kind of skipping over decision trees. The next, the next time we'll go over actually a couple more, and we may even go over gradient boosted methods, gradient boosted trees today as well. Um, so then let's also go and let's split this data since it's already in this format. Um, we'll use the random split on the data. So we want uh, our train and our test data here, and we want df dot, and here we'll do random split, and we want to do 0 0.7, 70% for the training, and 0 0.3, 30%, and then let's set our seed to equal 42. And then so now if we look here, train, again, is going to be looking like this. All right, so it has, again, we're just showing the top 20 rows here. And we can also take a look at test as well. And again, we see that everything is hunky-dory here as well. So let's also double check on our schema. And again, here you see that it is a double and then our features are a vector. So that is exactly what we want it to be because again, this is exactly what's going on with both of these uh, as well. So now let's go on and train our model. And let me actually put some notes in here. So here we are, uh, train, test, split. And then down here, we want to actually create the model. So let's do something like um, uh, train RF model. Uh, RF again for random forest. So we set this to RF is equal to random forest classifier. And we want our label column. Again, this is the label. That's what it's called here. And we have our feature column. And this is going to be features. And then we are going to do uh, the number of trees. Uh, we're going to say is equal to 20. So this is something that's a little bit different than what we've had before. Usually when we um, instantiate a model or we create a model, um, we may only be giving in the labels and the features, and we don't normally have anything else in here. But this time we're going to make sure and put in the number of trees that we want. Um, and if, if 
if I remember, there should also be a seed in here so that you guys are gonna get the same, same results that I'm getting. And I'll set that again, the seed to 42. Uh, let's do model is equal to our rf.fit, and we want this on our training data. Then let's also do our prediction here, and then we'll do our model.transform here, and we want it on our test data. And then we can also check our uh, predictions, and let's check the print schema on there as well. And again, so now we see that we still have, we have our prediction column, the probability vectors, which are very useful for us, uh, as well as our raw predictions, our features, and our labels. So then now we can actually take a look and grab what we want. And so our the first thing that we really want to look at is selecting up and to be able to compare, for example, our labels and our actual predictions. So we can actually take a look at it. Um, and let's also maybe look at the features as well. So we'll take our predictions dot select here and we want a prediction label features and then let's show and we don't want to see all of them. We're only going to see the top five. So we look here and actually this just just taking a quick glance at it. It doesn't look too bad. We have at the top five. We're actually at 100% accuracy here. But to make sure about this, we should never just eyeball things. We need to make sure and take a glance at the predictions using um, evaluating stuff. And so this is a multi-class classification evaluator. We'll do the label column is again our label. Uh, then we have our prediction column is going to be prediction. And then the metric name that we actually want to use here is going to be the accuracy. So then we actually have a proper accuracy measure. So if we create an accuracy measure, we take the evaluator, and then we want to evaluate on our predictions. Oh, pred. Um, and then let's actually take a look at this. So print, and here we, whoops. What did it not like? Uh, 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 uh. It's because I misspelled prediction. Um, so let's go through and let's say here for checking out our model, we want our test error. All right, and we want something like um, is equal to, and we want this to be taken care of this way. Uh, and we want here to grab to grab the error, the test error, we do 1.0 minus the accuracy. And why? Oh, whoops. There we go. It says zero in here. So this is definitely not a good model. It's a terrible, terrible, terrible model. Um, and so what we actually would probably need to do is do something else. So maybe we can try it here. We'll try a gradient boosted uh, machine algorithm because again, our test error is zero because that means it, it feels like it got everything correct, but that's never the case. Um, so we also need to maybe check our model importance. This is actually the beauty of using um, uh, any type of um, of decision tree algorithm or random forest algorithm is you can get the feature importances. And so here you can actually see which of the features is the most important which one isn't. Now, again, in this case, since this is kind of just randomized data and they don't have any value names or anything, we don't know anything about the data set, it doesn't give us any intuition. But when we go through, and we'll, we'll go through another example um, probably in the next, uh, next time, um, and we'll actually be able to actually tell a bit of a story about why these model, uh, which, which variables are the most important. And this can also help you. A lot of times people will use regression trees before they start doing other regression models. So for example, you can even use this pr prior to using logistic regression or linear regression or any other types of regression models so that you know how important a specific feature is in the model and you can just focus on those uh, more powerful and meaningful uh, variables. So let's, let's actually go on and do a gradient boosted 
model. Okay, so gradient, gradient boosted trees. Okay, and a gradient boosted trees are again they're very very popular to use. Um, and again, you can also use this with a regression method, and it is it is an ensemble method just like uh, regression or uh, random forests. Okay, um, now the more information that uh, the Spark ML framework is going to implement is going to be found again. We can we can always go back if you want to and go and look at here is a uh, Spark Apache org and let me actually pull up the website I want to pull up here for gradient boosted trees it's somewhere over here Oops. okay if you guys ever need help just always go through and go to the uh, spark ml web page all right so again they are uh, Again, it's going to take in the same types of inputs that we've seen in the past. Okay, so it'll take in some label column and some feature columns. Um, I just wanted to show you guys this just because, again, a lot of times if you need help, Google is always going to be your best friend. And the next thing up is going to be uh, the Apache Spark docs. So let me go back and let's open this back up. And let's do our gradient boosted trees. Now, this actually this can be a very difficult algorithm to deal with, but Apache Spark does help us a lot with it. So again, since I've already imported all of these necessary things, I'm going to actually probably continue just using this uh, uh, this session, okay? Um, and probably the same data set as well, just for fun. But the next thing we need is from pyspark.ml class dot classification. We want to import G, B, T, and we want the classifier in here. So it's gradient boosted trees classifier. Now our data um, is going to be the same. So let me double check that we haven't done anything to the data here. Nothing has been changed with this data. So I'm going to keep this uh, data and let me see if we have done anything to the training data. Okay, the test data. Nothing's actually been transformed or uh, hurt in any way on it. So we're going to just keep all of our train and test data from before as well. Um, so let's go on and check this out. So let's create a GBT uh, algorithm. So we want the classifier in our label. It, oh, our label column is going to be label. Our feature column is going to be features. And then here we want our max iteration. Uh, we're just going to do 10. The reason I'm doing 10 here is because, uh, again, I don't want it to run forever. Um, this is something that you would need to um, set up um, to make sure that you're actually uh, optimizing your max iterations, that type of stuff. Um, but we'll, we'll maybe talk about that at another date when we're talking about optimizing um, other types of programs and models. So also I'm setting a seed again to 42 so that you guys can follow along and get the exact same results that I am. Uh, so let's do model and we here we want GBT dot fit. You know what? Do I want to? Yeah. Okay. We'll keep it this way. Fit. And then we want this on our training data. And then we will create our prediction model here and we'll do model dot transform transform. And this is on our test data. And then we can take in here our predictions and we want to select out again we'll do this, this is, remember this is actually exactly the same thing that we've done before um, but again just to take a look at how our data is actually working here uh, and let's do show and we want the top five so let's take a look all right and so it looks identical to what we had had before so now let's actually double check everything and let's create an evaluator and so we want multi-class uh, classification evaluator. We want our label column here to be label. Our whoops, our prediction column here to be prediction. And then we want our metric name here, and we want this again to be accuracy. Uh, and then let's also just go on and do the accuracy as well. So we want an evaluator. We want to evaluate, and we want this on our predictions. And then let's also grab that uh, print test error here uh, is equal to, and what do we want? 
Um, here we want again one minus the accuracy. All right, and so here we actually get a little bit better accuracy. Now, <clears throat> again, this data is not realistic enough for uh, to actually judge the effectiveness of this model. Um, again, the this data it seems like that they're that we're basically getting almost a perfect model, regardless. Um, but and again, and it is uh, just there is a little bit of an improvement, right, over what we had seen before in the normal random forest model. But again, let's next time let's actually work on a more realistic data set, um, and let's maybe think about what data set we want to do in the future. Um, I do have some college data, okay? So talking about, um, and we can do a, a couple different tree methods next time. Um, thank you guys very much for uh, tuning in today. Make sure if you like this, please comment, subscribe. And if you have any questions, please make a comment in the comment section. I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.